Construction is everywhere, but from the outside, we mostly just see this. We rarely see what's really going on behind the scenes. And for most Canadians, the image of construction hasn't changed. Physical, sweaty, and polluted. In fact, 74% of Canadians still believe you need to be physically strong to work in construction. And only 37% think construction's environmentally friendly. But if we look at the biggest and more advanced companies out there, they seem to put a lot of effort into changing that reality. With new and innovative technologies, they say construction is turning into something smarter, less physical, and greener. So what are these new innovations exactly, and what are they changing? Hi, Yuri. Tina. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. The productivity in the construction industry was quite stagnant. The industry had no choice but to evolve. This is Yuri Bartis, Innovation Director at Pomerleau, one of Canada's biggest construction companies. For the most part, uh, the construction companies are small to medium-sized businesses, and those small and medium-sized businesses don't want to take the risk of bringing a technology that hasn't been tried or tested. The image of what the construction industry is that Canadians may have right now that's a little more old school and manual, is it false? I'm working every day to change that perception. And right now I can tell you, yes, I believe that the industry has evolved to a different level of how we construct. The older generation, they grew up with great knowledge of construction. That labor force is depleting. So we're replacing that labor force with young professionals going into the trades, but we do need to support those young professionals with technology. The first innovation that kicked off that change would be the development of 3D models back in 2012. And that visual is a huge help and a huge support to understanding what we're trying to build. Wave of the future, dude. 100% electronic. When I started in the construction industry, I was very surprised uh, that the industry still used paper drawings, ultimately. That's Thomas Strong, Senior Vice President, Technology and Innovation Leader, Construction and Infrastructure at NSP, and Co-Founder, Director Emeritus of Building Transformations, a not-for-profit organization dedicated to promoting sustainable and innovative building practices through research, education, and collaboration. Thomas dedicated his whole career to innovation in the construction industry. And his appetite for change started early in his career when he got the chance to work with one of the most creative architects in the world, Frank Gehry. Frank's office designs very complex form architecture. That's kind of what he's known for. So they create these very organic shapes and a 2D drawing just does not describe that organic shape very well. I was very focused on exploring technologies that could be applied to improve the way we were doing things. I had some exposure to the, how the automotive space worked using 3D models to rationalize all the car components that are procured and then assembled in an assembly line. So Frank's office started exploring using automotive software for the redesign on the Off Gallery of Ontario project. And we set up the processes where, you know, each subcontractor was given a 3D model that represented the shape of the elements that they needed to bring to the job site. That became like the wireframe that they had to put the meat on. Since then, I mean, it's just been nothing but acceleration with the use of tech. If you break down the acronym BIM, it's Building Information Modeling. And what's really important is the I in BIM. It's the information that we're able to put into the 3D model. We can easily extract that information and identify quantities, how many doors are on the construction project, windows, and different uh, quantity of materials. All of this information is what's going to help our construction projects be more efficient. Everyone who access to this 3D model can have the same information at the right time. They can go through the model, they can go up and down, they can see all the disciplines, and and they can decide what we're gonna do when we have a kind of issue. And once we start getting a little bit higher, you can see some piping and some HVAC. All of that together is probably five or th six different drawings, but in a model, they're all merged into one. It significantly improved the communication and collaboration on site. And this one technology opened the industry up to a completely new mindset on how to approach building. It used to be 20% planning, 80% execution. And because of that, there was a lot of inefficiencies on, on the job site, right? A lot of sort of like cutting things in situ or reworking materials. And there's, there's quite a bit of waste in that. And now we're doing more like 80% planning where we rationalize the project in 3D. We're able to figure out exactly what we're gonna do 
that enables uh, prefabrication. And then ultimately on the job site, it's safer because there's less activities, there's less waste. And by rationalizing everything in 3D, we're able to be more productive. It's that sharing of ideas and the better understanding of not just the what we want to build, but how we want to build it is what enhances our construction projects. We started adding other technologies to that process like drone flying and 3D scanning. So those are all data capture tools that are going to identify where we are in the construction process. Using sensors, we're able to quantify how much waste is created from our construction sites and increase the recycling of the waste. Recycling is important and it will save our planet. We're also using VR for safety. Can I yeah, move around? Back up, back up a little. Okay, here we go. One here, one here. I'm very high. I'm very scared. Oh, 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 honestly. Look up. Boom. Honestly, my heart is racing. That shock value is a learning experience. So all of these aspects of this game apply to what you would need to do on a construction site. Oh, that was insane. Man. We almost just died. We're going to see your face. Tools are becoming more sophisticated. We went from having like hammers or nails to robotics, like tiling robots and drilling robots. The spot is a robotic dog. The way it climbs stairs and navigates our construction site is very impressive. We can use it for safety and monitor using sensors that are attached to the robot. And all of that information is enhancing our construction. The way I envision it is that we will most likely have robotics and equipment working on construction sites on off hours. So we would have a night shift where it's really just robots that are able to perform certain elements on the construction site where they would work better without any human interference and have the construction site completely closed for their operation. Construction pays tremendously well and it's very rewarding, but our labor force in general is shrinking. So if we can introduce uh, some systems that help a, a worker to double their productivity because they have some really cool robot they can work with to help them do their job, uh, I think the industry is going to welcome that. The idea that robots are going to replace humans is one of the many myths in the construction industry as well. What are you talking about? This technology brings a lot of opportunities for new jobs. We're moving into an area where we're going to have human and robots working very closely together and really improving the way that our construction teams are working. With artificial intelligence being introduced into our industry and automation, there's a whole array of jobs that we haven't introduced yet. But we can't talk about effective innovation nowadays without talking about sustainable development, especially when we consider the impact that the buildings we create have on the environment. Buildings are the third largest emitting sector after oil and gas and transportation, representing 18% of Canada's greenhouse gas emissions. So are any of the innovations in construction actually focused on building greener? The construction industry is fundamental to development. All of our housing, our infrastructure comes through the construction industry. The choice about if we go in a sustainable direction in the future or an unsustainable direction is going to depend more and more on the choices in the construction industry. This is Shoshana Sachs, an associate professor for the Department of Civil and Mineral Engineering at the University of Toronto. She does extensive research on how we can build towards sustainable development. How can we both build more, the more housing, the more infrastructure, the more maintenance we need, and pollute less, use less resources, make less pollution, and less greenhouse gas emissions. I'm very focused on how can we do that in the next 10 to 15 years. There's a lot of things that are changing quickly. We're getting better at making concrete. We're getting better at making steel. We're coming up with new types of insulation that aren't based on fossil fuels. That's exactly what Jean-Francois Cote does. He's the Director of Standards and Scientific Affairs at Suprema, a company specialized in construction materials. Jean-Francois leads R&D to create sustainable materials that are as performant as other polluting alternatives. Upstream stages mean everything that happens prior to the actual construction of the building materials. Things such as the extraction of the raw materials, the energy that is required to manufacture the goods, it's all the way up to 80% of the overall impact. So the hotspots are there. This is where work needs to be done in order to select materials and insulation techniques that will reduce the burden of the different construction materials. Instead of using petrochemical-based products, if you use substances that come either from recycled source or bio-based, the inevitable result is a reduction in embodied carbon of these products. We're going to need some cultural change from Canadians as a whole to understand that the way we build in the future has to look different than the way we built the past. 
in North America, our homes, we build them very leaky. And so a lot of the heat leaks out of the house, a lot of the air conditioning leaks out of the house. A passive home is built tighter. And so it keeps the energy inside. When you heat it up, it costs a lot less money to heat or cool. It uses a lot less energy. We need our provinces, the federal government, our cities to change rules about how we build. There's a huge amount of prescriptive regulatory environment that makes it hard to do anything new in a lot of the things we build. So we need a change in the regulatory environment, which we have started to see big steps in in the last five to six years. What's the most important question that we need to ask ourselves when we are trying to build greener? Is how do we build a community that works for us? We tend to focus a lot on the private space. How do we make this one room or this one unit, okay, this one building? But what we all really want to live in is a community. And if we can build higher quality communities with better public services, better public space, then we don't need to build as much in the first place the communities that are investing in having a really good public realm, really high quality construction at the public level, are happier, cheaper, and more sustainable. And we're already seeing a change in the right direction. According to the Canadian Construction Association, in 2022, green building grew by 55%. It's clear that the construction field is going through one of its most innovative and significant transformations. And when we know the kind of impacts this industry can have on important issues such as the housing crisis and global warming, it seems more essential than ever to keep improving the way we build. The construction industry builds our cities, it builds our infrastructure, it builds our bridges, it shapes our behavior, it shapes our society and improves our lives. It's a really exciting and rewarding industry to be in. The opportunities that are created by different technologies are only going to increase. It's only gonna get more exciting, more creative with new members coming into the construction industry. They're, they're bringing new ideas and linking that with the different technologies that we're seeing. It's only going to change the way that we construct.